In what world is South Park Snow Day a 3 out of 10? First impressions. Hello, I am the many talented Mr. Jefferson, and I just played South Park Snow Day for about an hour on my stream, and I found out that everyone was just shitting on the game, which I was thoroughly enjoying. I normally wouldn't even do a first impressions video on a game I have barely played, but all of the negative feedback has prompted me to make this video, and all of the positive feedback has convinced me to stream the game again, because my first live stream is getting more views than pretty much any of my other content, which is pretty crazy because my newest content has been outperforming everything else that I have been doing, except for that like one Mech Warrior review I made that just won't stop gaining views. I'm going to start this off by saying that I like the game. My completely untainted opinion at the end of my stream was to recommend Snow Day, and you can see me enjoying myself the whole time I played. I have a feeling I know where most of this is stemming from, especially in the case of the 3 out of 10 IGN review, where they plainly state that Snow Day is not Stick of Truth or the Fractured Butthole. I also like how in the review he goes out of his way to put an extra pause between butt and hole, because for someone who says they like the edgiest humor in those games, they sure seem squeamish about leaning into the humor themselves by naming the game the way the creator intended it to sound. So congratulations, you figured it out. Snow Day is not a turn-based RPG. It's a totally fucking different genre entirely. Most of the complaints boil down to it's different, so I hate it, but I have a different perspective on this. First, the Shattered Butthole is still $20 more expensive than Snow Day is. So besides being a different genre, the scope of the game is also smaller because it's working with a $30 retail budget. That budget appears to have been well spent because the graphics were good enough for me to comment on how the character animations and the snow looked pretty freaking amazing for a $30 game. The voice work and writing were done by the creators of South Park, so it's all authentically South Park. The game doesn't get as outrageous as the RPGs from what I hear, but we're dealing with the difference between a third-person 3D action game and a turn-based RPG, and pretty much every single role-playing game I have ever played in the entirety of history of gaming has had a longer and more complex story than any action game ever made. It's inherently easier to craft stories in a game that is not focused around action, which is why comparing Snow Day to The Shattered Butthole makes zero sense from a review perspective, especially given that it's also a four-player co-op game, which would further restrict the kinds of narrative freedoms you would have in a single-player role-playing game. Here is Matt Stone talking about exactly the differences between making the previous game versus making Snow Day. And, they, and, they, um, and the idea is they call the bullshit card because the kids say it's bullshit if you keep using it. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, we were really, like I don't know if you remember yeah. Calvin, Hall, Calvin and Hobbes, yes. where the kids are just making up their rules all the time. <laughs> that is definitely uh, something we love and, and talk about a little bit. The idea that the kids are very imaginative, right? I mean, this is, this is the fun of South Park, is you actually have these kids who can build their own universe and with its own internal logic and rules and then immediately find over those rules see how this goes as i said this was a this was a we tried to again bite off a bite off a doable piece to do our first 3d thing not not have not um bite off too much but it definitely shows that like you know the, the, for me i just accept that these are the south park kids i know it's a new look but to me it makes total sense i think we've got we learned a lot about the animation and i think now we could really go mm -hmm. even further so hopefully, I mean, depends how it does. You know what I mean? All people think about it. Well, also now that you've done this in the game, is it something that you could maybe this three D format bring back to the show? We we thought about it, like you know, but again, this like what what how you would do that and make something out of it? I don't know. Uh, for comedy's sake, I don't think it's any funnier in three D. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's any less funny in three D. Right. So if you're just trying to deliver jokes, it doesn't really matter. But for gameplay and like being able to just put stuff in a world like the 2d stuff is amazing as it is to to make those games it was really really hard and you think about what you have to work with yeah you know it's just a very confined 
you know, like how we even made those fights work. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, the freedom here to, to create is just a lot easier in the 3D realm. And the game, like the previous games, 2D games, it, you know, it feels like you're in a soft part movie. It, you know, it is very immersive. This is more of a visceral feeling of just like being able to run around in soft park and run around in the snow and play in the snow. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, very fun. All right, speaking of perspective, let's take a step back from Snow Day and its 3 out of 10 rating and compare it to other game ratings on this same site. I have only ever given a numbered rating to one game, and that's because I don't actually believe in numbered ratings. They are way too reductive to be actually useful, but everyone was sucking off Starfield at the time, and I thought it was a mediocre game. I would describe it as below average, and I gave it a 4 out of 10, because by definition, 4 out of 10 is the highest rating you can give something and still have it below average because 5 is fucking average, not 7. What did IGN rate Starfield? Fucking 7 out of 10. Oh, like I said, we're getting some perspective here, so I'm going to name off some other games and compare those scores as a baseline. I'm just going to go ahead and name off the three worst games I can think of off the top of my head that I have played personally. Saints Row 2022 was so bad it lost a hundred million dollars, the studio has shut down, and they are currently selling off other studios. The Quiet Man was the worst game of 2008 as voted by fucking everybody. Garfield Kart Furious Racing, which is a game we play as a meme about once a year because that's about all any of us could really stand to play it, is hilariously bad. All of these deeply flawed games have higher ratings than South Park Snow Day, which is a game that looks great, feels good to play, and has absolutely never ever crashed on me. Nothing about this game was a surprise to IGN, which also makes this review make little to no sense to me. Matt Stone himself played the game with IGN staff on March 11th, two weeks before the release, personally explaining how the game works. And again, this is the writer for all three games and the co-creator of South Park. They even have a video of this visit posted on their YouTube channel. Well, I just sucked. That's the news of the day. Which one are you? A little blonde one over here not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> if this video should somehow make it to Trey Parker or Matt Stone, I'd like to make them an offer. The next time you want to let somebody take a look at your game, fly me and seven other streamers I know who actually enjoy and have experience with action RPGs, out to have dinner at Castle Bonita, get the same kind of hands-on experience with the game that the IGN staff had. That is two focus groups of four players each who will give their assessment of the game as people who enjoy video games, not as game journalists. I already appreciate what I see here and the Calvin and Hobbes analogy hit me because I often make comparisons between Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes and why I respect one and I don't respect the other. And Snow Day feels exactly like what you described. It is a bunch of kids playing a game with nonsensical rules using their imaginations just like in Calvin and Hobbes or in Charlie Brown. Don't think I didn't see the Snoopy dance. And I can really appreciate that, and if you really are watching, I'd also like to thank you personally for South Park Snow Day because it's easily the best performing content on my channel right now, and it's helping me grow and get new subscribers. It's like Snow Day is sitting at number one, and at number two, it's my current playthrough of Class of 09, which is trading back and forth places with my pinball FX videos. And those two pieces of content are weirdly equally popular, despite being radically different, and pinball FX reviews are going to lead me right back to South Park again because of Super Sweet Pinball and Butter's very own pinball game, which is a two-pack of tables I recently recommended in my overview of pinball FX tables I call the bests. And I still have to do a full review of those tables, which will probably come sooner rather than later, because 
Snow Day is getting so much attention on my channel right now. So, thank you! I'm closing in on a thousand subscribers much faster because of your game. So, why would I think that my video has any chance of being seen by Matt or Trey? Because, way back before South Park was a show, Matt Stone and Trey Parker created a video Christmas card which wound up in the hands of George Clooney, who I believe is responsible for making a bunch of bootleg copies of The Spirit of Christmas, one of which wound up in South Florida in my local video rental place called The Video Shop, which is where I hung out as a teenager, and I just happened to be hanging out inside one day after closing, which is what we often did with the owners and employees to play Magic the Gathering. And then they're like, hey, you got to see this videotape that they had just got their hands on, and it was a bootleg copy of that same Christmas card they made way back in the 90s, and it found its way to me before the show was even picked up by Comedy Central. It was these exact bootleg videos that caught the attention of Comedy Central in the first place. And that makes me believe I actually have a very, very good chance of being seen by Matt and Trey because I know they have access to YouTube and I am actually talking about a game that they personally made, so it might even hit the recommended videos. The fact is, mainstream media has never been the driving force behind South Park. Cannibal the Musical would not have been made if it was not for Troma. Fox passed on South Park. The Motion Picture Association gave Matt and Trey so much shit over Orgasmo and South Park bigger, longer, and uncut. And now, joining them is IGN, who has bent them over without lubrication. I genuinely appreciate all of the amazing entertainment you have provided over the years. I have been really impressed with the restoration of Casa Bonita because children need more places of wonderment where they can have fun, and I believe that the restoration of Casa Bonita may have influenced the development of South Park Snow Day, which feels like a game about kids just screwing around and having fun, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I would like to also thank my viewers, my subscribers, my channel members, and all of you who hit the thumbs up button, and a super sweet extra thanks to all of you who went above and beyond in donating to or sponsoring my channel recently. Stay tuned, I will come back and do a full review of Snow Day when I have played enough of the game to actually justify doing a review. This will involve playing more than just the five initial stages because th this is basically left for dead. You're meant to play it over and over and over again. This will have to count as my first impressions review, I suppose, because I have really enjoyed what I played so far, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the game and hoping maybe some of my friends actually pick up the game so I can play it the way it is meant to be played in four-player co-op with people I know. Until next time. Toodles! Fuck it, let's do this. Oh, it's right there. Quick launch. Let's do this shit. What's up, pre-built gaming fire? If you're still in the chat. <laughs> Fucking love it. Immediately get an error. Uh, can't start the game. And this happened last time I tried to start it, too. And we're going to do this again, and it's going to fucking work. Launch. Running. Yes. Fucking congratulations, Saint Pro. Con fucking congratulations. Holy shit. The game doesn't even fucking launch.
I, I, I really want to congratulate you on your latest fucking masterpiece. Uh, this absolute piece of dog shit uh, that won't even fucking run. Holy shit. Yeah, that, that game I just fucking spent $60 on, I don't have permission to play it. Uh, I need to ask my mommy, uh, or something. What the ever loving fuck put it up this game once today? You're fucking kidding me. I really had to go sign up for their shit-ass website just to play my fucking game. Oh. My. God. Fuck you, Volition. Fuck you. Right in your fucking ass. Saints Row. That's right. You guys, you fucked it up already. You already fucked, you've already pissed me off and I haven't been able to play the game yet. I'm already pissed off. Oh, fuck you guys. Did you just lock up? No. What's going on here? Yeah, the game's broke. I I didn't even make it through a character creator. I can't escape. I can't enter. I can't, uh... Nope. Well, there's Crash 1 already. So, I couldn't get into the game until I, I signed up for their shit-ass email. Uh, bullshit. Um, uh, we've got Crash number 1 already. I didn't even make it through the fucking character creator. Oh my god. Let's take them out, boys! <laughs> You know what? Bowsette's hot, but Boozette's cute. She's shy. Alright, so what you want to do is just zoom in on each individual person and then they die because there's an auto lock. As long as you uh, let off the uh, the button. <laughs> this is tough, <dumb, laughs> by the way. Is it over? I've not seen Chompette. You have more courage than brains. Goddamn right I do. You're too predictable. Am I? That's all it took to break this fucking plane the whole time. You know, I could have shot the engine out at any time.
Hello, crowd. I am not following this stupid hippie around anymore. Eric, where are you going? I'm going this way. Young man, I am the adult here, and I say you go this way. Look, you can stay over now, but I'm going over now. Young man, I have had it. No, 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 no. You now, me now. Screw you guys. I'm going home. Good! You deserve to die, you little bastard!